Welcome back to this special edition of Hannity Justice in America. Now with the Democrats' collusion conspiracy exposed as a hoax, it looks like a new round of party infighting is on the horizon. Because while Democratic leaders like Nancy Pelosi and Majority Leader Steny Hoyer are signaling against impeachment, that's not stopping other rank-and-file lawmakers from pushing their own agenda and even refusing to fully accept Mueller's no-collusion finding. Take a look. You accept the specific conclusion that there was no criminal conspiracy? I accept that conclusion for now, but I think there's a need for continuing investigation. There are clearly offenses. Impeachable offenses? And there may be impeachable offenses. There may be censurable offenses. Do you accept the special counsel's conclusion on that point? Um, to, to, um, to a degree, but again, we need more information. I believe impeachable offenses have been committed, and I believe it's worthwhile to, to put in history's files what this man has done in impeaching, but I don't think it's going to happen politically. The base wants impeachment. They want impeachment badly. That was uh, Mr. Cohen, who I had the pleasure of serving with in Congress. Wow. And it gets worse because 2020 candidate Senator Elizabeth Warren is joining the impeachment chorus, tweeting that the House should, quote, initiate impeachment proceedings against the president of the United States, end quote. And echoing her are Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, all despite Mueller findings of no criminal wrongdoing by the president. Joining me now for reaction is Fox News contributor Sarah Carter and Congressman Mike Turner of Ohio and Andy Biggs of Arizona. Uh, to the three of you, thank you for joining us here. I want to start with uh, Mike Turner. You're in Ohio, but you're also on the Intel Committee. Uh, I, they're singing the tune of impeachment, for goodness sake. What's your reaction to that? Well, you know, Jason, this is part of the process of trying to delegitimize a Republican president. We saw this, of course, with George W. Bush's election, where they alleged that he colluded with his uh, governor brother of Florida to steal the election. They took that case all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. And now with Trump, they claimed he colluded with Russia to steal the election and then used, as you kept saying, Hillary Clinton funded material to get surveillance uh, uh, over uh, the Trump campaign. But, you know, in the heartland right here in Dayton, Ohio, the headline that hit everybody's uh, doorsteps today was no collusion with Russians. And uh, that certainly is, has a big impact. That's not a presidential tweet. That's the headline. It's going to make it difficult for people like Adam Schiff, uh, who's gone around saying that there is collusion. But now we see their shift. Now they, they want to go from collusion to now say they want to go after the president because of his opposition for their efforts to pursue him for crimes he didn't commit. I don't think people are going to buy it. I think they understand those four words of no collusion with Russians to hopefully uh, be the end of it. Well, I'm glad the headline in Ohio got it right because the Washington Post and the other ones did not. And Sarah Carter, I want to get your, your impact on this. Senator Warren, she's one of the leading contenders out there. She's saying she wants to have impeachment. How do you think that's well, going to go? Well, I don't think it's going to go well for her. I mean, this is this is going to backfire. It's going to backfire on the Democrats. The American public's really sick and tired of this. They know now, based on this report, no collusion. There was no obstruction. Now we're hearing that in the report, you know, that even Don McGahn, his story changed multiple times. Uh, that's uh, uh, President Trump's former lawyer. And, and so there was even a you know, little section in the report that specifically stated, you know, his story was very confusing. So uh, as far as obstruction is concerned, there's no obstruction there. And this is coming from, you know, from Elizabeth Warren, who was basically called called out for lying on her card and, uh, you know, calling herself an American Indian. Um, and, and we know that she's not. This is going to backfire on her. It's going to backfire on the Democrats. Uh, Adam Schiff uh, is, is another one that's been very much pushing this collusion delusion narrative uh, consistently at President Trump. And uh, I think the American public's going to tire of that. And I'm going to tell you something else. The most important thing, I believe, Jason, is that coming up, when the investigations start on the part of Attorney General William Barr and when the investigations are revealed uh, that Michael Horowitz has been conducting over the past year, it's really going to backfire on them. Now, Andy Biggs, you're a congressman on the east uh, side of the Phoenix Valley there, Mesa and, and whatnot in Arizona. Very important state in the 2020 politics. I mean, do, do the Democrats that you serve with in the House, do they really love Mike Pence that much? Do they really want him to be the president? Are they, or are they just on this crazy train to who knows where with all this impeachment talk? Well, I think they're on the crazy train. I think there's a significant number that are very skittish and wisely so 
Uh, they don't want an impeachment process. They know it's going to hurt them, especially those 40 districts that we call swing districts that, that support Trump, that maybe a Democrat picked up last uh, midterm election. But I'll just tell you what, when Nadler's uh, subpoenaing these uh, documents and he's going forward, I think they're doing a market test to see if they're able to keep the middle that they're hoping to get by it, if they go to a full impeachment. I think they really want to do a full impeachment. They think that the, the base is ginned up enough to do it. But I think that there's some wise heads or some politically minded heads in Pelosi and Steny Hoyer who are saying, hey, this is going to hurt us if we do it. But I think Nadler, and you know Nadler, and you know yeah, Schiff, yeah. Uh, they, they, they want to go forward and just test well, this and to and see, you had, can we stand there? Yeah, well, you had more than 60 Democrats already signed up for impeachment before they even got through the report. Exactly. Uh, Congressman yeah. Turner, uh, you serve on a very important role on the Intel Committee. You see day in and day out behind closed doors Adam Schiff. I mean, how does he have any credibility? I don't understand why he even has a security clearance and why he's even on the committee at this point. Well, it is very troubling. Certainly all of the Republicans on the committee called for his removal as chair of the committee, not just because of the misstatements that he's made where he's come out and said uh, that he saw evidence of collusion where clearly there was no evidence of collusion. And now the Mueller report, uh, you know, un, um, without question, uh, settles that issue. But the issue is, is that he is using the committee solely for the purposes of pursuing uh, President Trump with his vendetta against him. You know, our adversaries are Russia, China, North Korea and Iran. And, and we need to be looking at the ways in which they're impacting our national security. And uh, as long as uh, Adam Schiff continues to believe that the greatest threat to this country is Donald Trump, uh, our adversaries are getting a pass and our committee needs to get back. to No, work you're on right. Security. There is a huge opportunity cost uh, by not focusing on the other true threats to this nation. Uh, I've got just 30 seconds left. Sarah Carter, where, did this, where does this go next? Well, we know where it's going. It's going into very deep investigations into the genesis of the origination of this investigation into President Trump. I believe there will be indictments. I believe people will be held accountable for this. And that is why I think, Jason, that any type of impeach impeachment proceedings or hearings of that nature are just going to backfire on Co the Democrats. Congressman Biggs, last word. Do we actually see people in handcuffs held accountable for the genesis and the abusing the FISA court system? We better because the American people demand that. And I, it's, if we don't, it's just a, another crime in history. Thank you, all three of you, uh, for joining us on this beautiful Friday night. It's Friday, and that means it's time for Dan Bongino's News Explosion. This week, the theme, of course, the Mueller report. Our favorite former New York City cop and Secret Service agent is here to give us his top three explosive takeaways from the report. And as you listen to what Dan Bongino says, see if you catch him using the word um or hmm or pausing at all. No. He is the most complete sentence speaker you will ever meet in your Thank entire you. life. Dan Bongino. Gosh, and no prompter it. either. I don't even put notes on my hands or anything. This is all, all natural, buddy. Natural. All right. So here are my three stories. Before we get to the Mueller stuff, story number three, I got to go back to CPL. Our buddy uh, Avenatti, uh, Frank and CNN, a creation of CNN. Uh, you know, the more we find out about this guy, the more he, the creepy he becomes. It's amazing. Tucker, has there ever been a less impressive human being on cable news opining no. on a wider breadth of topics. And that's Michael saying a lot, Evans. as you know. <laughs> I, I her, he was on this show called Reliable Sources <laughs> with George Costanza. That's the funniest part of this whole thing. Like, listen, Brian Stelter, change the title of the show after Avenatti. Those clips aren't going anywhere. We saw them. They're out there forever. The show's done. It's not reliable sources now. It's unreliable sources. It's, go it's got to be at best. <laughs> you can't go back to that. That so ship has sailed. All right. Story number two, getting back to the Mueller report. The critical, critical takeaway. It's not what was in the Mueller report that fascinated me. And I'm through about 90 percent of it. Just got to get to the GRU stuff. It's what's not in it. Now, Tucker, we've all been told by, you know, the, 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 uh, the brilliant academics and media people out there that, as you know, are much smarter than you and I. Way smarter, we are the way great smarter. unwashed and the dumb ones. They have told us that Mueller was this demigod and was going to expose Russian collusion, right? But what he conveniently leaves out of it is that some of the people who made that Trump Tower meeting happen, the Russians, were in fact connected to Hillary Clinton through Fusion GPS, the company she paid, and personal relationships already acknowledged in the media. 
I thought we were investigating Russian collusion. Uh, I'm not sure that's what Mueller was doing. I think what he was doing, to quote Mark Levin this morning, is he was writing an op-ed for uh, 30, uh, 30 million dollars. Let me ask you one, one, one question. Yeah. Do you think what you just said explains the puzzling fact that we haven't heard, I don't think we've heard, from Hillary Clinton on the release of the Mueller report? Tucker, they, she has a lot to hide. Rinat Akhmetshin, who was the Russian intel connected, alleged individual showed up for the Russian Trump Tower meeting, and the Russian lawyer, both had ties to Clinton and business ties to Fusion GPS. This is documented fact. Anybody can look it up on the interweb out there to make a joke about it. You can check it out yourself. But again, nowhere in the Mueller report are those relationships mentioned. It's basically a Jack Ryan story told to make you believe Trump colluded with the Russians exactly. so they can get a roadmap for impeachment. That's what it is. Wow. Well, it, yeah, which is inc incredible. Story number one is, <laughs> listen, how did the media, <laughs> how did they blow this? The American media was completely humiliated, Tucker. They got the story totally backwards from the start. They told us collusion was real and the spy scandal was fake. We were all conspiracy theorists. The story was actually, the spying scandal is very real and collusion was fake. And one quick thing, and we're running out of time here, but I find it ironic that they keep patting themselves on the back for getting minor details of the story right. It's like going to a bank robbery, reporting on a bank robbery that never happened, and then celebrating that you got the color of the car the guy left in right and patting yourself on the back like Jim Acosta. Still Good job, Jim. Jim. Great job. A bank robbery that never happened. And Great I would report. say, by the way, this show actually did get it right from day uh, one. From, we haven't patted ourselves in the back a single time, and we're not going to now. Dan Bongino, you're the best, and I hope it's you have a great fun. Easter weekend. You too, buddy. Thanks. Thank you. We're out of time.